Sup guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. Have you seen part one of my two-part Need for Speed Most Wanted series? Yeah, I know that they're out of order. What are you, my mom? For this video, we have to go even further beyond. All the way back to 2005, in fact, where the original Most Wanted was released alongside hits like Call of Duty 2, the first Lego Star Wars, and Bratz Rock Angels. 2005 was a simpler time, back when your PS2 didn't have 50 gigabyte game updates every other day. The only thing I had to worry about was getting my homework done, and it was back when I wasn't so thick. It's gonna be a poop. Most Wanted 05 is one of my favorite games ever made as a kid, and it still is today. But is it truly objectively great, or is it just my rose-colored glasses getting in the way? I can't see it all now. Most Wanted 2005 story begins with our silent protagonist, similar to Gorn Freeman, Doomguy, or Zelda, in the iconic BMW M3 GTR, but still makes appearances in just about every new entry, just like Altair's outfit in every new Assassin's Creed. You catch the attention of Motorola Razor on Singular, who challenges you to a pink slip race for the number 15th spot on the blacklist. But surprise, the dude named Razor raises your car's oil tank before the race. You lose your car and have to start from the bottom and work your way up the blacklist, real Oscar stuff. The cutscenes in this game are truly a sight to behold. First off, the story is Lion King, if you consider Razor's scar in your car your dad? Long live the king. The story was only made memorable from the actors who were uh, trying their best, to the game engine backgrounds, and the hazy green screen look that made the actors appear more like Barbie and Ken than looking like they were CG characters. Not to mention the insane level of fan service that was a lot more awkward than sexy, and probably a tad sexist these days. Humongous. Later Need for Speed titles ditched a live action cutscene approach for a while, but brought them back for the two most recent games. Personally, I welcome the cringe over a lack of story in general, and to me is one of the many reasons Most Wanted 2012 felt empty and lifeless. The cheese level was through the roof, but each Blacklist member had a name, bio, and their cars had unique customizations, giving some character to each Blacklist race, and making it exciting to not only win the races, but there was a chance to win the pink slips to their cars as well. And speaking of cars, there are cars in this game. The most wanted car roster contained about 32 cars, depending on whether or not you were a peasant. But you may have noticed there's a lot more than 32 cars available, so what gives? Don't get ahead of me, I'm getting to that. Alright then, keep your secrets. The roster was a large quantity of low to mid rangers, with only a few supercars obtainable by the end of the career mode. This meant that the majority of the cars were not meant to be blisteringly fast millionaire machines, but rather the kind of cars you'd actually see being street raced. Not only that, every single car had a plethora of visual customization options, ranging from body kits, spoilers, rims, and even dated tribal paint designs. The cars were just as much as your canvas as they were your racehorse. And if you're like me, you'll have spent just as much time customizing as you did racing. After all, what's the point of winning if you don't look good doing it? So you look good, and you feel good, but how do the cars feel? Hey, I one of the few downsides of being able to experience more modern arcade racing games is that cars can feel more unique the more of them teraflops you can cram into a box. So going back to a game that's 15 years old at this point feels even more simple than it did back then. I say this not as an insult, but the cars for the most part feel the same within each performance class. A car maxed out feels pretty much the same as another maxed out car, and the same goes no matter where you are on the car hierarchy. Cariarchy? But what is a true compliment is that the cars feel weighty, like you really are hurtling two tons of metal down streets at over 150 miles an hour. While some other arcade racing games may take the paper thin car approach, overall, the handling is excellent for the style that they were looking for. It just feels like towards the end, it's designed so that you can pick any car you want and setting to have to choose handling over aesthetics. So we talked about the story, and we've talked about the cars, but I feel like something is missing, you know? I wanna get in trouble. Like, I feel like I'm a really bad boy and I need to be punished. That's right, the police are here to kink shame and they do not relent. Unlike in most one in 2012, you really need to ditch these guys by heat level. Otherwise, they're gonna be your life for a few hours. And your heat level does not go down unless you let that bad boy cool down slowly in your safe space, or switch up the look of it to bring it down faster. While pursuit systems in racing games have your usual roadblocks, spike strips, ramming vehicles, and helicopters, Why are we still here? Just to suffer. It's how much of a pain to deal with all those things that make it memorable. 
Not only that, it's three strikes in your route. And if you lose all your cars without enough cash, it's permadeath. Yep, you can game over and will have to start your career all over again. Which actually happened to me as a kid, but I wasn't that far to begin with. Now, I fully understand that the police weren't that difficult, and I know that there are a few ways to cheese them now. But 10 year old me didn't know that. And I think I made it to the 5th blacklist member and either got stuck or moved on to a different game. But I did end up beating it a few years later. It's not just a folder! I am right. Overall, this game is a wonderful classic, but we aren't done yet. You remember the huge car list before I rudely told you to shut up? That's the old combining with the new, like a creepy sugar daddy simping for a younger woman who's draining his wallet. I'm really bad at comparisons today. It's the most wanted Redux mod. It's more like a mod compilation than anything else, but to summarize what it's got, it's got a buttload of cars, new camera angles, 360 version stuff that I guess wasn't in the PC version from the get-go, rude, and a bunch of other under the hood improvements that gives the game a fresh coat of paint. So if you already played the base game, adding this to your next playthrough adds a whole lot. So what was the point of this video? It was to celebrate what I thought is the most wanted and most wanted compared to the 2012 most wanted. But how did you guys feel? Did you guys feel like most wanted 2005 was the masterpiece that it was compared to 2012 like I do? Or did you guys feel like that even wasn't the best in the series? Let me know below and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.